Thank you for joining us today for this webinar, Five Reasons You Need a Change Management Tool for CUCM. My name is Phil Corbin. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Verify. Today, I'm joined by Kevin Sweeney, a Customer Success Manager also here at Verify. Welcome, Kevin. A uh, quick reminder, this webinar is being recorded, so if you have to leave early, we're going to send you a link to this recording. Uh, you can also visit our webinars page at verify.com slash webinars to watch any of our previous webinars once they have been posted. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat panel on the right side of your screen. Good questions always make for a better webinar, so please do not hesitate to use that panel. Um, if you're not familiar with Verify, uh, we specialize in analytics and management solutions for UC platforms like Cisco, WebEx Calling, Microsoft Teams, Zoom Phones, and pretty soon here, Avaya. We also offer migration assessments. So if you're in the process of moving to the cloud or cloud calling or just thinking about moving, we can help you get the data you need and make your migration as easy as possible. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into those offerings today, but I encourage you to check us out at verify.com if you're interested in more information, or you can just reach out to Kevin or myself for more info. Uh, so today, today's webinar, pretty straightforward. We are going to cover the top five reasons any organization needs a change management solution for their Cisco call manager environment, CUCM. After that, we're going to open our session up for a quick Q&A before announcing our Amazon gift card winners. So with that, Kevin, let's jump right into things. Let's talk about uh, manual tracking. Uh, let's get started. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how companies without any solution in place are handling this task. Tracking changes in your CUCM environment is a vital task, but it can be pretty tedious without any sort of help. Some companies, can make do with tracking via spreadsheets, but this method can uh, be pretty error prone. Uh, any small change like adding a phone is gonna cause that spreadsheet to be updated manually or it's gonna be out of date real fast. Uh, some cases people will even take screenshots of their configs and store them in shared folders. But if you have multiple people that are tasked with tracking, you might run into issues where someone didn't document something properly or maybe you just uh, one person, but you have different people in the call manager making changes. Either way, if this method, uh, if you're using it, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time combing through spreadsheets, screenshots, looking at different configs of your call manager just to see what changed. Uh, so with that, Kevin, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, kind of, you know, my experience of working with, uh, you know, different organizations, um, when, yeah, when they don't have a solution in place, there there really is no uh, tracking method, um, other than like you mentioned, uh, you know, somebody manually putting down what they're changing from and, and what they're changing to. Uh, sometimes tracking it through a, a ticketing system, um, you know, with those. Hopefully, the notes are updated enough in a ticketing system to where if you do have to revert something back, you can. But uh, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, you know, they're not. Uh, you know, you've got multiple hands in the call manager, cookie jar, people are doing all sorts of different things, different ways. Um, so there, there never really is a whole lot of trackability to go back to how something was done as far as changes being on the call manager. Um, you know, you could have something that's a pretty minor change and it brings down a block of 200 phones. Uh, your options there are really, hopefully they documented everything. Um, <laughs> and you can, can figure out who did those changes and revert yeah. it back. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of leads us right up into number one, Phil. So I'll pass that yeah. to you. All right. Number one of five, uh, compare changes between present and past configurations. When you're tracking changes in your environment, there are many configuration elements that you're going to want to consider, such as phones, dial plans, device pools. Uh, you really need to be able to see what changed and who made those changes. Uh, you also want to be able to compare your present configuration with historical baseline configurations. Um, Kevin, you have an example of this? Uh, yeah, so I think one example here that is, uh, you know, pretty common. You know, you might have a group or, or you know, a department uh, or a group of users or a manager that comes back and says, you know, hey, we need to make adjustments in our, you know, our hunt group or, or our call queue or maybe our Unity system. Um, you know, we want to change some options around. 
So you go through the proper channels, uh, you know, you make the changes and they come back to maybe three months later and they're saying, you know, hey, this had the opposite effect. Can you change it back? Um, well, that's great. But unless you documented exactly all the configurations that you changed to, uh, you know, to meet their expectations, you know, you, you don't have a list of how it was set up before. So now in order to be able to get back to that previous configuration, you're kind of in the dark. Um, but the nice thing about a change management solution is besides being able to just compare those changes, uh, you know, now you'll have a running list of how that call manager was configured. Uh, so if I need to go back to say, you know, hey, three months ago, how was my call manager configured on this day? Uh, you know, if you've got those snapshots running, you can go back and set that environment exactly the way it was. Um, so not necessarily, you know, an error on anybody's part here, but more of just a configuration change that, that was requested. Uh, but then they change their minds. Um, you know, what a good change management solution is going to do in this situation is really give you the ability to kind of see what changed and then also help you make those changes back. Um, you know, so not necessarily a block or, or something as detrimental as phones being down, but but just, you know, day to day changes that people request that, uh, you know, it doesn't meet the need and they need to be able to get back to those. Um, I think another example we see a lot of uh, people upgrading their call manager. You know, they're making changes. You may want to run a snapshot prior to your call manager upgrade so that, uh, you know, that way once you've upgraded call manager, you can kind of compare the old call manager version to the new version and see what changes took place. Uh, you know, this way it's, it's a really great way to make sure that, hey, this upgrade did what it was supposed to do and the services that were running before are still the same services that are running now. Uh, yeah, so I, I think with those, it's pretty clear that having the ability to see um, all those configurations, how they were historically can be pretty important. Great. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Number two, identify and troubleshoot issues quickly. So if and when any issues pop up in your UC environment, uh, you had any other UC admins uh, need to be able to see a configuration change is to blame. And it's important to have a tool that is aware of your current CUCM version and rec can recognize the data fields required for a change management report. This is gonna be super in, uh, important, allowing you to target any issues and uh, resolving them quickly. Kevin. Um, yeah, so this one kind of plays into the first one a bit, but you know, let's say somebody comes in or you, know, you leave on a Friday, you come back on a Monday and then you got a block of phones down. Uh, how do you quickly identify what changed within your call manager? Uh, you know, being able to see what happened, how the call manager was configured on a Friday as compared to how it is uh, now, uh, you know, you really want a quick and easy way to determine what needs to get changed back to fix those block of phones. Um, you know, because the last thing you want to do is, is spend an hour trying to figure out what got changed and, and not only figure out what got changed, but how the configurations were before. Um, you know, so kind of as an example of this, this let's say, uh, you know, somebody goes, they might miskey a parameter, uh, you know, type in something incorrect. Call manager doesn't actually show you what that parameter was before. So, you know, like we mentioned previously, unless somebody's documenting those changes perfectly, uh, you really have no way to go back and see what they selected or, or what was miskeyed uh, to be able to fix that problem. Um, it benefits of being able to compare the previous and current environment is, is that you're gonna be able to go ahead and isolate exactly what got changed uh, you know, pretty efficiently. All right. Number three, reduced downtime and risk. Uh, a good change management solution is going to provide you with a clear view of changes before they're applied. Uh, this can definitely help mitigate the risk of unintended consequences from configuration changes. Uh, you can analyze the changes and identify any potential issues before applying them to a live environment. Uh, this is going to be pretty helpful in preventing service disruptions and downtime. Okay. Um, yeah, so reducing downtime, we kind of talk a little bit about that when we go into number two, uh, yep. you know, try to track down who made a change or what change may have gotten made. Um, you know, it can really be kind of a huge endeavor that, that could take hours of work, you know, digging mm -hmm. through previous configurations or blocks of phones, gateways, users, um, you know, depending on the situation, 
uh, where change management is going to you know, be able to help you reduce that time. It would usually take uh, down to just minutes. Uh, so rather than having to go through, let's say, you know, my translation patterns or my phones or my device pools or gateways, enterprise parameters or service parameters, uh, I can run a report within you know, just a matter of a couple minutes and identify if any of those key places have had any alterations in the past day. Um, and, and as far as reducing risk, uh, you know, one of the things that a good solution will have is not only the ability to automate reports, but also to automate reports that only look at a certain value uh, within a phone system. So mm -hmm. um, let's say, for example, you know, we're talking about risk, you know, adding additional logins to the call manager. Let's say you add a new login to the call manager, um, or you know, or in this case, let's say somebody else adds a, a login to the call manager. Well, uh, were they supposed to do that? Did they do that the right way? Um, you know, unless somebody tells you that they're adding a login, you as a call manager administrator uh, may not know that's even taking place. Uh, but with change management reports, you can monitor those application users. Uh, and then once a day, generate a report to identify if anything was changed in those application users, um, you know, really allowing you to know if somebody was added as a login to that call manager. Uh, the other part of that, as far as reducing risk, is uh, people are constantly either adding translation patterns or changing translation patterns. Uh, but as a call manager administrator, you might want to be able to keep an eye on exactly what they're doing. Uh, you know, in other words, did they do something wrong? Uh, rather than waiting for calls to start dropping, you can look at, you know, a change management report that's been scheduled daily to look at those translation patterns um, and identify anything that's changed. So, you know, you can find out within a 24 hour period if somebody put a wrong translation pattern or, or added one that maybe they shouldn't have. Uh, you know, so a good change management tool uh, can really be just as proactive as it is reactive in terms of reducing risk and downtime. Um, now you might not get those reports until the next day, you know, when those reports are scheduled to run, but it definitely would be, uh, you know, a bunch of calls dropping because a translation pattern changed, um, you know, cause when you're running into your translation pattern issues and things like that, um, those don't always show themselves immediately. Uh, so kind of going back to reducing downtime, but it can take a while for those issues to, to kind of start showing themselves. Uh, you know, it might take one person saying, uh, you know, hey, I called in a bunch of times and I couldn't get through. And, you know, finally I got through. Well, that could be an indication of something larger that got changed on the call manager um, that, you know, you don't know until it starts getting brought up by enough of your customers that that they're not getting through to how they're supposed to be getting through. Um, you know, and I've kind of been on the, uh, you know, the customer service side of that too, making phone calls to an organization. I just keep getting you know, drop calls, drop calls, and finally I get through. That can be really frustrating. So I think this is, you know, pretty important for, you know, from a customer service standpoint as well. All right. All right. Number four, moving on, stay in compliance with approval processes. So in larger businesses and organizations with multiple administrators, uh, it's really crucial to have a process for change approval and compliance. So a good solution is going to make it easier to follow change management procedures and really make sure you're complying with any uh, organization policies and regulations. Yeah, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, being able to run reports on your configurations is going to make any approval process easier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's say you need to make a change. Uh, I can make that change and, and run it up the chain and, and get those chain uh, those changes signed off on pretty easily. Uh, it's really just kind of providing good visibility into your CUCM. So any changes you make can just get visibility and passed up through management. Um, and then also with compliance, uh, you know, there's certain federal regulations. You've got things like CARES law, Ray Bombs Act. Um, there are just certain configurations that need to be met within that call manager to stay in compliance of, uh, you know, any federal or, or local regulations. Um, so, you know, you may be tasked at times to audit uh, those configurations, you know, and sure, you could go through, you know, if you don't have a change management solution and, and take a bunch of screenshots at different parts of your call manager uh, and try to organize those and send those up. 
or you can simply just run a report and be done with it and send that report off to you know the necessary people um, or you know kind of again what i mentioned earlier where hey you know people are requesting changes uh, we need to make sure that those changes are within our compliance uh, you know and get those signed off on so just sending a couple of reports to the right people and, and just following those processes all right, all right. and finally Number five, simplify disaster recovery. So in the event of any system failure or some other disaster, having access to the past snapshots of your environment allows really for quicker restoration to a known good con configuration state. Uh, this simplifies disaster recovery efforts and is gonna help you get your system back up and running with minimal downtime. Yeah. Um... You know, for this one, uh, you know, a lot of these really tie into each other and, and this one's no different. Um, but when big changes are, you know, happening in call manager, it's really important to be able to track those. Um, you know, you never, like we said, what, never want to come in on a Monday and, you know, your CEO's phone is down when they come in because you did something in call manager or, or somebody did something in call manager and you just have no idea who it was. Um, you know, or maybe even worse, you know, your network is down and emergency services can't be contacted. Um, you know, it's much easier to say like, okay, when we see what the change was, who made those changes, what it was previously, let's go ahead and get that fixed and we can figure out why that happened. Um, and so those are the pretty much the five reasons uh, we have right there. Uh, there was one, Phil, that I was kind of thinking about when we were going through this list. It's not on the list, but, um, uh, you know, it is something we talk about a lot is there's kind of a big push to cloud calling going on right now, right? I mean, we mm -hmm. talk about that all the time. Um, something as built reports, you know, can help with, uh, you know, as built and change management can actually help with uh, cloud readiness. Um, you know, you can run a particular as built report that will actually go out and, uh, you know, touch uh, every device that's registered on your call manager. Um, and, and what that does is, is read things like serial numbers but it also reads version numbers as well. So this would be, you know, the same versions uh, that you would literally have to pull off the phone physically or off the box that the phone came in. Um, so it's not something that you can just easily pull out of call manager. Um, actually, you can't pull that information out of call manager. Um, but, you know, with a simple report, you can go ahead, touch all of your phones, get the version of the phone and compare that to Cisco's phone version to determine, you know, what what do I have as cloud capable and what is not cloud capable before I make any, you know, big migration decisions. Um, so yeah, with that, let's uh, let's move over and just kind of a real life example, uh, something we saw with Jersey Community Hospital. Um, you know, what was the challenge? Uh, kind of a lot of the things, you know, they were facing a lot of the issues that that we just talked about. Um, you know, they lacked the ability to track administration changes. Uh, any modifications to their UC environment were kind of hard to monitor. And it was pretty much impossible, you know, for them to be able to assess the impact of any of the changes they did make. Um, and then obviously, you know, the lack of visibility uh, made troubleshooting a challenge as well. Um, so yeah, the solution, you know, they came to us and after implementing uh, Verify's change management, we were able to help them streamline those tasks like identifying or tracking changes within their UC environment. Um, you know, for them, it was things like modifications to route patterns and, and IP phone modifications. Um, you know, and, and the end result here was it, um, you know, kind of touch a little bit on, on the reasons we covered here today. They improved their operational efficiency, you know, by simply providing visibility into the configuration changes, um, you know, across their UC ecosystem, which, you know, allowed them to be proactive on, uh, you know, issues. Um, and help them minimize downtime and also comply with any regulatory requirements. Uh, so yeah, just real quick, real life example. And uh, yeah, so those are, that's pretty much it. Um, just as a quick recap, you know, we went over uh, some of the issues with manual tracking, uh, you know, screenshots and ticketing systems. Uh, they're not always the most reliable. Um, and then top five reasons, uh, you know, comparing configurations. People are requesting changes or, you know, they're upgrading call manager. They want to be able to compare versions, uh, identify and troubleshoot, 
having that visibility to really um, is really going to help if somebody miskeys a parameter or you need to figure out, uh, you know, what happened. Reducing downtime and risk, uh, you know, running daily reports on configurations is going to help you be proactive and in, in catching catching issues um, with things like translation patterns, uh, you know, compliance, allowing you to document everything and make sure you're staying staying up with, you know, local or organizational approval processes. And then, uh, you know, disaster recovery. If anything major does go wrong, uh, you know, you can find a known good configuration and uh, easily get back to that. Um, All right. With that, let's open it up to some Q and A. All right, we, we have a few questions, Kevin. Um, first off from John, can change management tell me if a phone goes unregistered? Um, so change management, it's not a real time tool. Um, it, however, it can provide you, you know, a daily automated report that will show you anything registered or unregistered when, uh, you know, compared to the previous day. Um, so yeah, if you're, if that's something you're looking out for or an issue you're dealing with, you can, you can run reports and just compare them to, uh, you know, the previous period and see what changed. Okay. Uh, Mark asks, uh, can Asbuilt provide information on specific sites? Um, so, uh, yeah, so sites can be fairly relative, uh, and it kind of depends on how you define sites. Uh, if you use device pools, um, yeah, we can filter Asbuilt and change management to different sites. Uh, we've also had customers identify their sites by device description and use that to filter as built to site. Uh, so yes, uh, but it does depend on your definition of a site. All right. Uh, Jason asks, can as built show me when a phone was last used, last used? Um, uh, unfortunately, as built can only identify the state of the phone. Uh, but it's not based on usage. Um, however, uh, you know, using verified CDR analytics, we can identify when a phone was last used or produce, you know, a list of phones that uh, have not been used over a given period of time. Uh, you know, this is something we've talked about in a previous webinar. So uh, I'd be happy to send you information on that as well. Um, will it work? I see what from will it work with two clusters? Uh, yeah, you can configure this to work with two clusters um, and, and pull that data out of both at the same time. Good question, Kim. All right, any other questions? I do not see any. I'll pass it All over right. to you. <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, visit verify.com slash change to get the PDF version of this presentation. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, do not hesitate to reach out to Kevin or myself. Uh, that's Kevin or Phil at verify.com. And we'll be happy to help you uh, learn more. Um, so with that, have a great day and see you next month. Thank you, everybody.